Okay, so some main goals for your patients with neurological disorders as a nurse. Um, you guys want to make sure as a nurse that you are keeping your patient in good health as much as good health as possible because one route or another doesn't matter the pathophysiology whether it's myelin sheath or decrease in dopamine or acetylcholine or just sclerotic um, neurons or the, the neuro cells are being very scarred and sclerotic it doesn't matter the patho um, of how things happen with your patient what really matters here now that your patient has one of these issues is are you taking good care of them because you're not going to be able to reverse any of these issues we can only um, stop them give them what well, we, we can't stop all of them uh, we can just basically increase the amount of um, uh, what is it called lifestyle right okay let me just write it down because I'm just babbling now. <laughs> so one goal for your patient with a neuro problem is to maximize motor function so you want to maximize the motor function so a good nursing test um, a good nursing school question would be your patient uh, has um, Parkinson's disease or your patient has myasthenia gravis or MS would you as a nurse help them with um, getting dressed help them with their ADLs help them with as many things as they can do or would you give them assistant devices to help themselves and be more independent very very interesting question that I had on one of my tests you guys want to maximize motor function so you want your patient to be as independent as possible try not to do everything for your patient especially if they are in a care home or in a nursing home or what we call down here in Southern California a SNF, a skilled nursing facility you guys need to make sure that you are maximizing motor function give your patient the most independence as possible now obviously if they can't do it don't just be like here you know get yourself dressed especially if your patient has Parkinson's and they have those pilly rolling hands they're trying to button their shirt and they can't help them out right but we want to maximize function okay so number two woo, is ADLs we kind of did that one already so independent with their ADLs so don't get that question wrong if it shows up on a test or an NCLEX okay or a HESI exam Number three is you want to prevent depression. Psychosocial right here in these conditions are pretty much huge because we cannot reverse any of these conditions. We can only treat them, treat the outbreaks, and kind of slow down the progression. But we can never reverse what's already being destroyed in the body, which is very, very sad. So we want to treat psychosocial very high so watch out for your psychosocial meaning that your patient might become depressed knowing their condition is not being can't be reversed um, and really it's probably one of the most important ones to helping your patient move along with their ADLs and maximizing motor function. Um, so adaptive self-care, let's see here. And the biggest one, the biggest one that uh, really concerns me 
because uh, I work in the uh, emergency medicine, is A, B, C. A, B to the C. A, B, C's, one, two, threes. Um, a, B, C's is something that I lived by before I went to nursing school. Um, airway, breathing, circulation. That's really all I knew as a medic uh, working in the field and in the ER working as a tech before I went to nursing school. You know, I thought nursing school was going to be like, oh man, that's like a piece of cake c compared to what I've seen, right? Uh, I, I worked like in six different ERs before I went to nursing school. And I thought nursing school was going to be like, got this, right? <laughs> but um, really, all I knew about was ABCs. I had no clue about psychosocial. I didn't have a clue about ADLs. Um, I had no clue about a lot of nursing care plans, nursing diagnoses. I was like, nurses can diagnose stuff? Like, what? <laughs> so, um, yeah, nursing school is a whole different beast. But, regardless of that, your patients with neurological problems, when you're developing a care plan for any patient, any patient, if you're going to develop a care plan, a nursing care plan, you want to see what's going to kill your patient the fastest. That's really your main goal. What's going to kill your patient the fastest? And that becomes your highest priority. So, ABCs. Airway, breathing, circulation are going to kill your patient the fastest in these types of conditions. So whether it's your myelin sheath with your multiple sclerosis, your Parkinson's disease, they have difficulty, let's say, swallowing or cutting their food because they're very shaky. Um, your myelostenia's gravis, they're very tired, have difficulty um, swallowing their food or maybe even might even choke while eating. And your ALS, your patients, those ones are huge because we have that myelin sheath, I'm sorry, myelin sheath, we have that, uh, that neuron being very scarred. And dysphagia, a choking issue for sure as well as a diaphragm going out so these patients right here will have to be on a vent sooner or later so watch out for your ABC's and increase independence increase motor functions ADLs as well as watch out for the psychosocial because it's very depressing having an irreversible disease and you guys need to make sure that you're doing the best you can as nursing students because there's a lot of bad nurses out there and do not become one of them that just focuses on the pathophysiology behind the diagnosis and you lose the patient in and of itself okay be a good nurse let's do this so let's get into focused on these four conditions here, really up close and personal. So let's do it.